Well, hello, beautiful people, and welcome. This is Majesty Sussex Report, and I'm Antonio. It's an absolute pleasure, as always, to have you here with us and for you spending some of your time, which is very precious, with us. We do absolutely appreciate it. If this is your first time um, or your first rodeo around this channel, give us a chance. Um, check out the episode uh, until the end. If you do like it, uh, do subscribe. We appreciate that. If you don't, then try another episode. See if that will be your thing. And if neither one is, thank you so much for trying and um, hope you find what you're looking for and good luck. Also, for those who are subscribers already, do remember to turn your notification on. That allows you to know whenever a new episode or video is being uploaded or has been uploaded. Thumbs up for the algorithm to keep it going, to keep our channel um, um, in in existence and 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 it still being available um, as per YouTube algorithm. So it shows other people also that there's this little channel that that exists that you may or may not like, right? And um, do leave us a comment or two or three. As long as it's, it's, it's useful and helpful and, and nothing negative about the um, Duke and Duchess of Sussex, I'm not interested in that at all. Um, this channel is here to support the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, okay? And your negative comments about them is not of interest to me or is not of interest to anyone else who is a part of this community and part of this channel. So there's other channels you can go and write your negative stuff on. Please go to, to that if that's what the energy you want to give out. Good luck to you. All right, so how do we start? We start out with good news. And I love to see, love to see good people um, I don't want to say winning because I think um, that even that phrase has been corrupted by some awful people, but to see them doing well, to see them succeeding. You know, each and every one of us has got a history. Some of our histories might be complicated, some might, of it might be quite simple, and some of it might be marred by different challenges, um, whether it's um, being dyslexic or not being able to pronounce certain words, um, having a speech impediment, I, 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 um, you know, grown, grown up in certain environments that were not healthy. But the spirit of the human being, oh, and I'm going to get emotional here. Um, come on, Antonio. the spirit of the human condition, of the human being, to want to be good and to see good and to work against all odds, all odds, to do that is a celebration. That's partially why I have this channel because I saw two people who were trying their very best and we're getting just bombarded with negativity, false reports, and a whole bunch of racism and gaslighting and all of those things. And, you know, if I'm going to do this channel and do things, my first check for me is, is it doing any good? Are you, are you bringing anything good into the world? into the space that you're in. And as long as I think that, yes, this is doing some, some good, I, I continue. And I say all of this for us to celebrate Misan Harriman, whose beautiful portrait of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex now is going to form part of, um, but Jesus, why am I getting emotional? Um, You know, it's really <sighs> the portrait is going to be now part of the permanent collection of the National Portrait Gallery. I think I think I'm getting emotional because when you've lived your life and it's a continuous battle upwards, 
right, to get anywhere because you have all these obstacles to overcome. When I see people overcoming them and being successful, my soul rejoices, my heart just warms, and the emotion is emotion of happiness, of joy, because succeeding in today's environment or in any, and especially also when you're a person of color, it's really hard. Many of us already with the obstacles that we've got because of the pigmentation of our skin, there's even additional obstacles we usually have to overcome in order to even be part of the conversation. So, congratulations to Misan. Excellent, extraordinary. Okay, I wasn't expecting to get that emotional, but um, it tends to creep up on me ever so often. And, you know, goodness, with everything happening in the world, we need more goodness, we need more triumphs of, of um, good. And it just makes me happy. So let's stay with some good news. Um, I saw this on the Sussex Community event, and I um, wanted to share it with, with, it, with everyone. And this is the power of, you know, the Sussex Squad or, or, or Sussex Group, the people who um, have come together with just spontaneously, there was no, you know, organization or leadership or anything like that. Just people who wanted to support the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, who believe in their philosophies and, 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 and their goals and wanted to also do some good in, in the world as we support them. And, um, you know, every year and uh, we do the fundraising and it, it's, look, it's done some wonderful, wonderful stuff. So congratulations to all of you, to all of us. Um, because beyond all the other stuff that's happening in, in the world, beyond all the injustices and unfairness that exist, there are things that we can do. And sometimes we don't know what that thing is. And perhaps just the fact of donating to this cause and helping um, uh, bring playgrounds and um, end this sort of inequality of play spaces is just marvelous and fantastic. So um, we, we raised, I think it, it says there are 130-something thousand dollars. And, and that is just amazing. And it was about 2,000 plus people from across the world that donated. So bravo, 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 bravo. All right, so the UK government, the government has called um, elections, and I think it's for July the 4th. Isn't that like a holiday in the US, <laughs> July 4th, <laughs> Independence Day or something? So, I don't know, the irony and all of that. Um, yep, yeah, so elections has, has been called, and since the election has been called, the palace... Uh, has decided that all royal engagements or events or all of that will be cancelled or postponed until further notice. So in other words, given the royals that are already trimmed down and not working a lot for different reasons, now get an extra 44 or 40 more days of not doing anything except briefing and I <laughs> created more some more um uh, more strife and all that nonsense but anyways elections have been called let's see what happens in our news um one of the stores that um the 
Princess of Wales of Kate Middleton um, highlighted and um, who wore what the store calls the vampire's wife dress um, is closing down and it's a tough time for many industries fashion included and you know the the star power of um, the Princess of Wales I guess didn't give it that um, you know extra fuel it, it um, needed to keep its doors open um, you know it's it's a it's it's amazing you know anything that the Duchess of Sussex wears or highlighting any you know particular designers or store how quickly it's sold out and and becomes you know you have to go on a waiting list sometimes to get that um, product so I, I guess you know not not the same um, not saying anything here I'm just as as um, James O'Brien would, would would say, this is this is not me inventing anything. This is this is just accounting, right? It's it's just it's just a matter of fact. And the BBC seems to be taking a page out of Archwell or Meghan Markle's um, business plans. They have. Um, announced a partnership or a global partnership with Lemonada, the media company that is um, um, going to be, well, has the rights to to um, archetypes and um, they will be the ones that will be putting it on different platforms and so on. So we can um, have that available um, soon. So, <laughs> BBC that you know first purchases the rights um, to suits, and now they're following in making step and um, partnering with Lemonada. Now I see, I it I I hate to say this, I really do, but because of the way things work in that in that country, and you know the whole thing with the royals and so on, like I'm suspicious of everything when it comes to you know anything that they're actually doing but at the end of the day I'm sure Lemonada and the BBC came to an agreement the price was great or whatever and hey the other thing I thought of look how again you know the 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 Meghan Markle sparkle and how it just increases businesses or business for any company right i am i don't even know if lemonada was in the, the 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 books or the thoughts or or anything of the bbc and you know by megan signing on with them um she brought that company's name to to everyone we, I, I, I didn't know about Lemonada before, and now I do, and I guess the BBC also. So, listen, she, she touches it, and it just, your business just goes up incrementally. So, great. There was a big conference, um, which is, was headed by um, the Queen Concert Camilla of um, SIPA, that is the S-C-I-P-A. And um, that stands for Side Chick in Power Association. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> so, um, the Rose met with the Camilla. And um, I guess Side, Side Chick in Power Association is um, creating their action plan for this year and next year and the years to come listen i i don't know what's going on there i don't know i i i just i, I find all of this so fascinating it's just fascinating to me because the audacity the audacity oh yo yo and now what was with the whole thing that the rose son was like holding the king's cape going up to that event 
Now, I, I heard someone say that um, as per royal protocol, and since the 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 royal <laughs> the royals invent protocol here and there, especially the royal of Rhoda. If this one is not true, let's just pretend it is and just say that it's true. So supposedly, like the people or the person who's supposed who should be doing that is 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 should be um, George, so Prince George. Like after his dad, he's next in line. So why is the Rose's son the one doing that? Once again. Fascinating. It's <laughs> these people, eh? Oh well. And some news on the charity that uh, the Princess of Wales, Kate, um, her um, Earth Child. Um, oh, sorry, not Earth Child. Um, early Early Childhood. Oh my goodness. Sorry about that. Earth Child. What am I mixing the two things together? Um, the task. Force unveiled that um, investing in childhood um, or early childhood to unlock about 45.5 billion a year um, uh, business investment in early childhood could unlock that much of money and bring that kind of value to the UK economy according to the report um, created by the Princess of Wales and they've, 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 they've said she was very much involved in it and is, has been contributing throughout all of this at the same time, with the same breath, they've said, don't, just because we just said that, don't expect that she's going to be coming back anytime soon to um, take up her royal duties or you're going to see her anytime soon. So it's very interesting that it would say one thing with one hand and then say something else with, with the other hand. I just find this whole situation very uncomfortable and at the same time um, alarming because... I have this feeling that there's just the machine at work and the truth is not being told, whatever the truth is. It feels as if, you know, when you enter into a space and you just don't feel right about being there or something, your sixth sense is saying, no, something is not right about all of this. That's how I feel. Now, this is just my personal feeling. You don't have to feel like that. And I'm not bringing any conjecture or making any assumptions now what i'm i am doing is 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 reporting what others have have sort of said and we know in spain um much has said that you know coma nervous breakdown all this other stuff that that have has has been said i just find it quite interesting that before right when she had supposedly allegedly the abdominal surgery then they when the whole where escape happened then they were like okay let's put her out there and we get a pictures with her in a car right about kate middleton please know that by bringing this stuff up i mean no disrespect and if she is dealing with cancer i'm deeply sorry and i'm praying for her but i am so scared that she got princess diana and i really hope that i'm wrong i want to take this opportunity to say thank you personally for all the wonderful messages of support and for your understanding whilst I've been recovering from surgery. This looks like AI to me. I've been getting that uncanny valley feeling every time I watch this and a lot of people are. The elites can deep fake anything these days. They have the best technology imaginable for this kind of stuff. And aside from that video feeling strange all on its own, this is a promotional video that they put out seven years ago. <laughs> Mental health it is being incredibly difficult. difficult. Same sweater, same hairstyle, same setting. Even the weather is exactly the same. They could so easily create this from that. I also thought it was strange that she was sitting there alone for the video instead of being accompanied by her husband. Apparently AI works way better if there's one subject in the video, which is why a lot of the deep fakes you see are just one person sitting there talking. I am not Morgan Freeman. And what you see is not real. Well, at least in contemporary terms, it is not. This is a deep fake that someone was able to make imposing Meghan Markle's face on the video. This, of course, came as a huge shock. And William and I have been doing everything we can to process and manage this privately. Obviously, the royals have much better technology than us normies have. Just the way they've handled the whole thing with her disappearance has been very strange. I pray that I'm wrong and that she's still here with us. So I wish, we wish the princess um, all the best and um, a speedy recovery. And um, may the treatment that she's receiving works well. 
and you know that all these um, rumors and speculations and all of that you know hopefully it's all just that and I wish her the very best um, I was going to chat a little bit uh, about the portraits and also about uh, the rangers a little bit but I want to get to your comments because um, yes I'm gonna uh, yeah I'm gonna stop this here and just get to the comment section Reba Henderson. Thank you, Antonio, for this information. I used to think our people need a better education, which is correct. But I also know now racists need a better education, too. They have been taught a lie just like us. They have no idea where they came from and definitely do not know any of our history, so they are totally ignorant of their racism. It has been excused and denied for centuries, so... They feel it's perfectly fine to dehumanize and abuse us. But what they really hate is when we call them out for their obnoxious behavior. We should just take it and remain silent. Obviously, they do not know anything about black women. I worked in corporate America for many years and had to straightjack a few white people who thought they were superior and I should shut up. Well, that was not going to happen. Luckily, for me, I had a very educated and militant mother who taught me my history and made me stand up for myself, so a few racist bullies had to be taken down. I did just that. I grew up with Megan's mother. We were taught to be ladies, but growing up in Los Angeles, you also learn how to protect yourself and take no crap from anyone. We traveled all over Los Angeles, Hollywood, Beverly Hills, Chinatown, Little Tokyo, Oviria Street without any problems because we thought we belonged wherever we went. Thank God all white people are not racist, but the ones who are should be pit on notice ASAP. I am too damn old for this nonsense to continue. Absolutely incredible, Reba. Thank you so much for sharing and um, what what testimony um, that comment commentary. It's, it's, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think it's important for us to educate ourselves. And one of the most important tools, I believe, even as an educator, as a person of, of, of multicultural heritage, it's important to understand where you come from. It's important to understand your history be educated in it so that people can tell you who you are. You should know who you are and stand on solid ground and have a, an understanding of your history, right? I think the dehumanization of people is, and has always been, it's a sort of a strategy that the Europeans came up with in order to justify slavery, right? In order to justify within their Christian faith that it was okay to treat other people inhumanely. And this was all for business. It was all for making money. And when a people see that they will reap the benefits of this racial inequality, they will support it. Even the ones that say they don't, right? Oh, I'm not racist, right? And I think what ends up happening many times is that there they are two stories to, to every um, uh, uh, situation that exists in our society. Like I... Uh, this, when people, when they see police, cops, interaction, and they question, well, why didn't he do this? Like the cop asked him to do that. Why didn't he do it? Because if I'm ever stopped or when I was stopped, I obeyed and I did and I didn't cause any fuss and everything went fine. Like the, the police officer was really nice to me. 
we exist in two different worlds and uh, actually more 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 than two right and your story your idea about interaction with um authority and 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 members of the police force or or whatever is very different than a person of color um uh, a uh, 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 um, certain minorities, it's very different. It's, it's so when you have two different storylines of treatment, you have to be able to recognize that and to say, okay, so that's not my experience, but you're telling me this is how your experience is. I hear you. I see you. Let's come together and try and create change. But what happens is not that. What happens is the person with the privilege usually will say, well, they had it coming. They should have done this. They shouldn't have reached for their wallet. They should have like walked away. They shouldn't have been like mouth. They should, should have, woulda, woulda, coulda. And recently we've seen like all the shouldas and should have done this and that. When the person does the shouldas and they still get shot or they still get killed or they still get beaten, then what's 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 the excuse then right and i think it is so important that parents teach their children their heritage teach their children where they're from install in them um pride you know how it it, it it's been um it it it, it kills my heart when I've, I've watched studies or documentaries where young um, children, these, these are children, African-American kids, black kids, um, some minority kids, and they will put the gamut of different hues of color and ask the child, which one do you think is the ugly one? And they will pick the one with the darkest skin. Which one is the bad one? They'll pick the one with the darkest skin. Oh, oh that's hitting me again. Um. Okay, all right. Oof. Get yourself together. Um. <clears throat> to see a young generation, to see the future look at themselves like that, it is painful, painful. And I'm not gonna say as a, a person of, of, of multicultural um, heritage that many times I didn't look at myself. I had, listen, <laughs> I, I think we do it all the time. That I haven't looked at myself and gone, oh, this is, the, I wish I had that, I wish blah, 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 and all this kind of stuff. But there comes a time where I'm like, hang on a minute. I like all of this. This is like a unique way of putting all, all of this together. <laughs> Right. And I can see parts where I'm like, ah, that's very like my dad is very much like my mom or like my grandfather or so on. But having that understanding, I've had to go through my own journey of understanding the cultures from where uh, my heritage comes from and to walk with certainty. Right. So education, education, education. And um, thank you so much. Riba. Gwendolyn Lindsay. Good discussion on racism, especially in the workplace. As a POC working and living in the UK, racism was covert, but always palpable. I was relatively unaffected till I gained promotion at work. Oh my goodness, the negativity and scrutiny was intense. The white workers I managed constantly reported me to higher management with made-up stories and lies. I was called to meetings to explain myself and actions on numerous occasions, but I was never defeated. I never cited racism when dealing with the negativity, because once you go down that route you lose the case. My strategy was to attack their mentality, professionalism, integrity, and intelligence. I, I remember my manager telling me that I seem unable to effectively manage my staff. Instead of making excuses, I fired back that I was not responsible for employing unprofessional inept people, so I have to work with what I've been given. Not my place to teach grown so-called professionals how to behave at work. 
She had no answer for me because she realized the implications of what I said. Believe me, when I finished dealing with my detractors, many of them came to me and apologized for their behavior towards me. I think you have to believe in yourself and have the mindset that the only person above you is our Heavenly Father. Hope my story helps someone dealing with workplace racism. Amazing. Thank you so much, Gwendolyn. And yes, I think part of the intention of all of this is to, is to share stories. And I think it's by sharing stories and sharing our experiences that we're able to learn, we're able to create, we're able to um, look at different strategies in order to deal with all of this. I think it, it, the, the, the sad thing is how much more work we have to put in, right? And sometimes I am sure we just get fed up because we know that we have to go the extra mile. We have to do this. It's not the people who are accusing us of X, Y, or Z. We have to make sure like every I is dotted, every T is crossed, every sentence is structured a certain way. We can't speak for more than five minutes. We have to, you know, we're constantly under this pressure that others don't have. And I'll tell you one, you know, one experience in the workplace, I, and this is not, not long ago, I, um, this particular manager and I, uh, 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 look, I, I thought she was fantastic, great, but for some reason she seemed that she didn't, she didn't like me. So when we would have um, our team meetings, and, you know, you're exchanging ideas. I would give my thought and my ideas and she would just look at me once I was done and then nod her head and then move on to someone else. Like she wouldn't even acknowledge it like verbally or say, oh, that was a great idea or not or give me feedback or anything. Uh, but everyone else in the room, she would, she, she would do that. And I tell you, no more than maybe 10 minutes or less, someone else would say exactly the same thing I just said. They would just move some words around, but the idea is the same, the concept is the same, and she would just like rejoice in, <laughs> in ecstasy. Oh my gosh, that's such a great idea. That is fantastic. Okay. Team, I, I, I think I think we have the idea. And I'm sitting there going, uh, I just said the same thing 10 minutes ago. And I would point this out to, to some of my colleagues and especially the one who repeated what I what I just said. And they're like, oh no, my idea was was my idea was different. No, my I think you said that you were gonna do it like like using your right hand. Mine was using your left hand. And I'm like no, I said, we'll use our hands. It's the same idea. But I, I, I kind of tried to test to see if it was just me, like I was, I was going crazy, because it also makes you question yourself a lot. So she would also do this thing where she would say to me, we have a presentation on, let's say today's Monday. We have a presentation on Wednesday on X, Y, and Z. I need you to be prepared. I need you to be well-researched. And I want the presentation to be immaculate. And I'm like, no problem. Now, this is extra work on top of my already work that I have to get done. And she would know, like, all the work I have. And the day of the presentation or the meeting, I walk, you know, I have all my stuff together. I have barely slept because of all the work I've had to do. And I'm ready to go, all set up. And she will walk in and she will just unplug if it's if we were in person she would just plug her laptop in and start doing a presentation from her laptop and a completely different presentation and i'm sitting there going um do you really make me waste like invest all that time working on this thing for you not to even look at it it was complete dismissal like you're not even worth me looking at your work. And that stuff messed me up because I wasn't sure what was going on. And the funny thing is that I would point it out to other colleagues 
And because she would treat them really well, they were looking at me like, no, I'm the crazy one. And the thing that was very insidious that happens is that you couldn't really raise the whole racism um, thing because the minute I think she started to realize that I was going, okay, the way you're treating me is not, is not right. Because I even brought it up to her, right? I said, um, is there a reason why we, you didn't look at my presentation or we didn't, and she'd go, oh, I just, just invent some, some excuse. But then in the team, if there was another person of color or a minority, she would, she would over praise them. She would like just say they were the best. So if I were to go to HR to accuse her of anything, she has this other person who was like, no, she's not racist. She's like great to me. She's like, she's been my mentor. So it's very insidious, the stuff that happens. And you have to be really careful, mindful. And I would say in workplace environments, take notes of every single thing. Verify, verify. And even in meetings, you know, summarize the meeting and send it out to, to, your, to your, you know, their, your superiors and just say, here is what I understood. This is what I'm going to do. Here's what you've asked me to do please conform and let him email you back saying, yes, this is what I asked you to do. Have records of every single, I know it's an extra step, but it's just protecting yourself. Because trust me, trust me, hearsay means nothing. Oh, she made me feel like this. Oh, um, they told me to do this. Oh, I was the only one who was excluded from this meeting. Worth nothing. It's just your word. But if you have it written down, it's worth something. Thank you, Gwendolyn. Thank you so, so very much. Beverly McCaskill. Love the poem, Antonio. Love always win. Happy sixth wedding anniversary to their HRH Prince Harry and Duchess slash Princess Meghan. Wishing for them to have many more bless, wonderful, joyful, beautiful years together. Thank you, Beverly. I I get inspired by love and 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 I don't know. I'm so corny, <laughs> like super corny. I I I love me a, a a romantic movie or you know as as long as it has a happy end. And if it's like one of those that are too real and you know. It's sad. Oh, man. I watched, um, what's the movie called? I think Stars of uh, Your Fault or Fault in Your Stars or something. Anyways, the, 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 the movie is these young people, young person um, dealing with, um, I, I believe it was cancer. And I watched this movie on the plane. I was flying back from London, actually. And I started bawling. I started bawling and the person next to me was like, are you okay? <laughs> I was like, um, yeah, no. <laughs> oh boy. But I, I get inspired by it. And, um, I, you know, I, I love to write. I write my emotions, my feelings and, um, uh, it's my way to get stuff out, and I I, I hope um, you folks enjoy it when when I when I share when I share that kind of stuff. So thank you so much, Be um, Beverly, and ah, yes, Harry and Megan. You know the love story for a time. Elon, the wave of racism directed at Nigeria just for them inviting Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan to their country is disgusting but not unexpected. Most of the royal rota are white Brits who coat their racism in just reporting the news about Africa. But is it really? The love and respect of which the Sussexes were shown in Nigeria was nothing those in the present royal family had experienced. The royal trip of Willie and Kate in Jamaica was unfortunately reminiscent of colony times, not a good look for 2024.
These royal rota, again, have shown that everything the Sussexes said about their treatment by these people is true. And the greatest sadness is that royal family remains silent, but again, that's not unexpected. These people have looked at all the problems that Nigeria faces without mentioning all they are doing to change these narrative. Do they seriously think they will be able to make these Nigerians? Knuckle down to these parasites? The UK has more food bank than all of Europe and also more homelessness. Forget there are receipts of the royal family visits to Nigeria, Queen Elizabeth, Charles, Princess, and just name a few. Dr. Maya Angelou words about racism as usual right on the money. Thank you so much, Elaine. The, the, the thing that I love about this is that the people of Nigeria knew the story. They knew the narrative. And they were not going to accept it or take it. And I've seen countless videos of people responding back and not only responding back but educating them because as the one commentator or or, or newscaster on the in the morning show in nigeria said you put a microphone in the face of any idiot or any fool and they will say foolish idiotic things to watch these people go on television and their hate towards this one woman is so immense. It's so immense. It clouds everything else, everything else in their existence. I, 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 I have to say, and again, because of my own experience, I, I, I am a little bit surprised. I'm not a lot surprised. I'm a little bit surprised. Because I kind of expected better, at least in faking it better. But they're not even faking it. They're coming right out and saying these grotesque, grotesque, racist. Mm. And Nigerians were like, I uh, beg your pardon? They were, especially, I, I've, I've watched a couple of that have said this, that, look, listen. Just because you have beef and you have some issues doesn't mean you need to drag an entire country into your beef and your issues. So I, I love that. But here, here, here's the thing. People who create the problem, okay? So they created the problem to start with. They've looted your country. They've taken most of the wealth out they have subjugated a people. They have um, trained them to be a certain way. So it will take generations, okay, to, to get that sort of mentality out because there's still a lot of people who grew up through in certain times that hold certain mentality that, you know, sometimes you have to go, but none. Like, come on. <laughs> right? Or, like, the royal family did do this. So, there's a lot of retraining need, need, needing to um, happen. They just showed and continue to show to the international community their true face. They, they, they're taking off the mask and forgetting that they've taken the mask off. Every single country on this planet has issues. Every single one. The ones, countries in the so-called developed world, every single one. You know, many of our countries deal with corruption and there's a reason for, uh, for that. So these politicians who steal from their own people. And we have that the wealth that a lot of these so-called developed countries enjoy, it's on the backs of other countries, from Africa, uh, South America, right? So they, Asia, they, they, they are so poorly educated. And that is by design 
So there's lots of people in 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 the UK who think that you know it's 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 Britain that you know first country to say oh we we are going to declare we're against slavery and you know they were the ones who raised the issue and all of that not but they don't recognize all the other stuff they were doing right it's like they wash their hands in front of the camera, but behind the camera, they're collecting. And it is amazing that they're so quick to point out problems in other countries. When the last, I think, survey that just came out, the UK is number one in homelessness, not just in Europe, around the world. The UK, number one. More food banks than anybody. Like, look at the problems that are happening in your country before you go playing almighty and all like, you know, we're better than this and better than that. Look, the same exact problems that you, you're accusing Nigeria of having, you have them too. Every country have, have, have them. The way, you know, women are treated, social justice, equality, all, all, all countries have these problems. Right, because there is a certain patriarchy that wants to keep society a certain way, and the rest of us have to fight to to change it. So, thank you so much, Elaine. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sharon Naismith, hi, Antonio. As always, talking about the effects of racism is a heavy topic. Sadly, though. A much needed topic amongst victims, especially. Being a victim myself, I haven't managed it quite as I should, mainly because experiencing it can feel so isolating. Yes, you have the love of family and hopefully a community, but how do you put into words the shame of being treated less than? As Duchess Megan said, it's not enough to survive something, one has to strive. It's an individual internal battle that many don't see as we present our proud, stoic public faces and just get on with life. Your podcast reminds me again that there is power in numbers. Bravo to all the women on that panel. And bravo to you for sharing your experience also. I will continue to fight these injustices. I just do it with the cutest smile that says, try me if you if you want to. Oh, Sharon, thank you so very much for sharing. I, I just I just want to give you a big hug, to be quite honest. Um, thank, thank you for, 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 for your honesty and your, and your courage. You know, discussing the effects of racism is indeed a heavy topic. It is, it is crucial, I think, for healing. It is crucial for bringing change. Um, and I, I, I do want to acknowledge the, the, the pain and isolation um, that it can, the effects that it can have. Um, it is a profound burden that, that, that one should not have to carry alone. And this is, this is part of my intention for us to share these stories and, and, and to talk about it. You know, because the shame that, that, that you feel being treated as less <clears throat> than you are is not only unjust, but deeply hurtful. R r remember this, that this shame is something placed upon you by others, others, their actions, another reflection of you or your worth. As, as, as I mentioned, you know, Megan, the, the, the Duchess of Sussex, so poignantly noted, surviving isn't enough. Striving, we, we, need, we, we, need, we need to strive, we need, we need to, you know, be able to, to succeed able to you know be in places where where we're safe to do our work 
to do or, 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 or praying to do our daily activities to to strive in the face of such adversity is where your power truly lies okay you are not alone in this struggle the feeling of isolation while overwhelmingly is is shared by 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 so many who have walked the path this path you know finding <laughs> finding words to express these these experiences can can be daunting sharing our stories as you've done as all of you today have can be incredibly powerful and validated not just for um, not, not, not just to, 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 to validate your feelings that, that you're not alone but for those also who in silence are not saying anything and feel similarly we need to always seek support and find community right i think this is one of the steps we we must take um finding ways to 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 sort of process and understand what might be next steps i need to take also sort of if you know you, you can't take certain steps because of of finances or or the situation that you're you you're in i know this is going to sound really silly but it has worked for me many times where i express myself creatively and that is through art through writing through music right um going for walks and and trying to 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 put that that feeling that thing that emotion in into a drawing or or a sketch or i'll just write and and, and let the anger um expel itself on a piece of paper and i don't i don't type right i i i, I hand write um and i guess when a person feels ready using your experiences to educate others can 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 truly shift the narrative from internal shame to external advocacy and can empower not just you but those around you to each and every one of you who shared your experiences who who left comments you know i, I haven't been I, able to put all of them up I want to say thank you thank you thank you thank you this conversation is 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 so important difficult but important your resolve you know um, Sharon uh, to continue to fight these injustices and from what each and every one of you have said makes me happy you know it it because there's people watching us and when i say people i i i mean our children our brothers or sisters or cousins or colleagues oh i'm getting emotional again <laughs> um whew, this is this has been an emotional podcast <laughs> just it, it it is so difficult and i truly understand my mother when she said to me you know that she sees me working hard and doing things and, and she just apologized to me to say i know how much you work i know how hard you study you have these goals you want to accomplish and i'm so sorry that 
you'll have to work twice as hard or three times or four times as hard as a person who does not have your skin color a person doesn't look like you she goes I wish you looked like you had the skin color of your dad things would be easier for you but you've got more of mine that stuff hits you and I love my mother enormously I've said this a million times on this podcast I love my parents and I am very happy and proud of everything <laughs> that, that I've inherited from both of them and it, 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 it makes us beautiful it makes us who we are we have to remember that I think just to close this off and I'm no great philosopher I don't have a nice way to close this off but things that are said and done is a reflection of those people they're not a reflection of our worth of, of who we are of our capabilities capacity of our intellect our intelligence our, our love it's not a reflection of any of those things it's a reflection of them it's a reflection of their insecurities it's a reflection of their deficit deficit of empathy Deficit of any emotional intelligence. Deficit of any degree of grace. It's their ignorance. It's not a reflection on you. It's not a reflection on us. It's a reflection on them. On them. Thank you. Thank you so very much. This has been an experience and I love you all thank you for allowing me to have this conversation thank you for sharing take care of yourselves take care of your loved ones and even the stranger that crosses your path be kind to them until we speak again The more I learn about the monarchy in the UK, the more I find it distasteful and disturbing. The treatment of Princess Meghan and Prince Harry is disgraceful and disgusting. The British media is despicable. Thank you for this moving conversation. It was nice to have their lies dissected in such a calm manner. Your music and imagery are excellent as always. Much love and mad respect until the next time.